Here at the Centre for Alternative Technology in Mid Wales, Mahuntleth, we've been going for more than 35 years now. We have over 150 employees, uh, 100 computers on our local area network, and we certainly get into the millions of visitors a year onto our website. That's to get our information services, our uh, mail order, and um, a whole host of associated uh, goods and services. We're increasingly dependent on um, computer use and the internet use, both as a way of doing our jobs, but also as a way of spreading our information around the world um, with the least possible energy use. What we had happen to us was essentially a uh, group of criminals somewhere in the world were using part of our web space to facilitate a criminal act, to um, host criminal activities in. It's as if a room on our site was being used to sell uh, black market merchandise. So we were inadvertently facilitating a criminal action and could potentially be held liable for that. We had started to use open source software to give us more facilities out of our web space. Unfortunately, the version of the software that our web developer had uploaded contained a security hole, which gave those who knew how to do it the ability to write information to our web space. We had no data lost to ourselves, we had no data theft from ourselves, we had all of those angles covered. The risk to us was that uh, we could have been financially liable. Um, there was the risk of a loss of reputation because we had effectively uh, given up control of a portion of our infrastructure um, to people doing bad things. Based on what we, what we know now, uh, firstly, I think this is much less likely to be able to occur now because we keep a much closer eye on the components that we're using on the website. Because this flaw was introduced by using a piece of software that was probably out of date almost as soon as it was released, in hindsight what we should have done is kept replacing that software with the latest version which closes these security holes. It's the kind of thing that's somewhat embarrassing to discuss. <laughs> um, I hope through exercises like this people will find out that this can happen and that um, it is important to protect yourself from what is uh, an increasing risk. It's, it's so lucrative for the people involved to do this kind of thing that they won't stop, but they need the, uh, the un unknowing assistance of people with perfectly le legitimate commercial websites to help them in this. I suspect that other businesses are aware of the e-crime threat in very general terms. I suspect that most of them either do not know or simply don't have the time to understand exactly how it works. And the, um, there is such a move now to try and develop websites that have all of the latest functions on. People want blogs and bulletin boards and galleries and it's all hosted on low-cost web space using free software and I'm not sure that people understand that that is introducing lots and lots of potentially very vulnerable code onto systems that they are ultimately legally responsible for. I learned of the existence of a police liaison officer for the Crime Wales uh, project for the first time at one of the breakfast seminars. I think that's extremely helpful. It means that there is a point of contact to go for advice. In our case, we simply didn't know if we should report this as a crime and if we should, who to and what they needed. Now I would go to the liaison officer and say, this has happened, what would you like us to do about it? One of the things I have learned from the Crime Wales strategy is the police are actually interested in learning about these things because at the time this happened, I was certainly under the impression that because they felt there was nothing that could be done, they didn't particularly want to know. So now we would, we would respond with a set of evidence and present it as a crime should they wish to investigate it.